right, the next mini lecture is on sigma and pi, and this will be even the fastest yet. Um, but I do, again, will show a second structure and go through it so you really have a good understanding of it. Those of you who choose not to, um, you'll be able to get a typical answer for it, but it really does help deepen the understanding if you really look into what it looks like and what causes it, okay, and what the difference is. A sigma and pi bond, this is on page 14 of your packet, okay? But I'm just going to show you another page which just really sim symbolize it really quick and short. So a sigma bond, which is shown as this symbol right here, the Greek letter sigma, a sigma bond is all single bonds. All single bonds are sigma bonds. And one of the multiple bonds in a multiple bond, a double or triple, is a sigma bond as well. Pi bonds is everything else, symbolized by, again, the Greek letter pi. So pi bonds is all the other bonds present in a multiple bond. So, for example, if carbon forms a single bond with carbon, this single bond is an example. This would be one sigma bond. If it forms a double bond, one of these bonds is a sigma, the other one is a pi. So in a double bond, you're going to have a sigma bond and a pi bond. If there's a triple bond, again, one of those is a sigma, but the other twos are pi's. So in a triple bond, one of them is a sigma and two of them is a pi. Okay, so you've drawn all of your Lewis structures on the tables in pages 10 and 11. Go back and look at your Lewis structures, and I'll just simply count them up. So in the section that has sigma and pi bonds, you're just going to tell me how many of each you have. So here in the molecule nitrate, which you should have on the periodic in pages 10 and 11, this is a sigma, this is a sigma, this is a pi because it's a double bond, and this is a sigma. So you'd put down that nitrate has got three sigma bonds, and one pi bond. And that's it. That's how you do sigma and pi bonds in about a minute and a half. Okay. Now, what is the difference between them? This is where I'm going to go through a molecule and show you if you really want a deeper understanding of it. If you choose not to, now you can go back to your packets, fill in the number of sigma and pi, and complete that table. What you need to know is that each single bond is a sigma, and the key is the double and triple bonds. One of them is a sigma, and all the others are pi. You might be simply asked how many sigma and how many pi bonds are present in this molecule, and that's all you have to do. Okay? So here's a molecule C2H4. Okay, first of all, how many electron domains does it have around each central atom? We'll notice each carbon is the same. How many electron domains does each of them have? Hopefully you said three. Okay, what geometric shape does each carbon attain then? Hopefully you're thinking trigonal planar because there's three bonds coming off of it. What's the bond angle that's going to form between all of these atoms here? Now it looks like it's 90, and that's what they try to do, but this is the Lewis structure. This is not the Vesper structure. Trigonal planar always has a bond angle of 120 degrees. So 120 degrees and trigonal planar maximizes the, these electron domains. They get them as far away from each other as possible to minimize the electron repulsion. So that's why this attains a trigonal planar shape at 120 degrees. So in real life, the molecule looks like this. Okay? All right, so now what's happening here? What is the hybridization of each of the carbon atoms? Well, if you have three electron domains, what's the hybridization? sp2 from our last lecture. So what that means is each carbon, again, its valence shell, one of its electrons in the 2s jumps into the p, creating four equally four uh, singly occupied orbitals. And that's why carbon has got four dots around it, okay? So a sigma bond are the bonds that exist in a same axial plane, okay? Now, what sp2 means is that for each of the carbons, since they're both sp2, is one of their s's and two of their p's come together to make three identical sp2 hybrid orbitals. And those are the ones that are going to exist in the same plane. But then there's another 2p orbital that does not hybridize. This is an unhybridized orbital. And that's where the pi bond comes into play. A pi bond is the result of p orbital bonding 
which is not hybridized. Okay, so the carbon has an sp2, and I'm going to try to keep that 120 degree, degree geometry. And that other carbon comes in, and because this is the sigma bond, is right here, where they're bonding in the same plane as the other bonds. And that's why one of the bonds in a double or triple will always be a sigma, is because it's in the plane of the other bonds. 120 degrees. This is trigonal planar. It's a flat molecule. It exists on the same plane. So here's the first bond, and this would be right here, that sigma bond between the carbon carbon. Then there's the hydrogens that come in, and they overlap. And here is all of the sigma bonds. These are all in the same plane. That's a sigma. That's a sigma. That's a sigma. That's a sigma. One, two, three, four, five. So again, if I go back to here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All five of those sigma bonds are in the same axial plane. But one of them, the second part of the double bond is a pi bond. So what is that? Well, now what I'm going to do is take this molecule, and I'm going to rotate it of this class so that it's more flat or straight on. So I've kind of flipped the molecule, looking at it more from the side view. And what happens is there still is that p orbital that I said was unhybridized. Well, that p orbital exists right here. And each carbon has it. Here are your sigma bonds with your hybridized orbitals. Okay, those are the sigma. But now when I twist the molecule, there's this p orbital this pz orbital that's not within that same plane. And there's an electron in each of these, and now this is where the pi bond comes into play. A bond forms right through here, and also down here because there's a bottom and top to it, and right there is the pi bond. And you can see why right here we almost kind of get a pi configuration. So the pi bond occurs in the z plane, the plane outside of the sigma bonds between the unhybridized orbitals. And this is what a double bond looks like. And this is also why it's stronger. You've got the bond in the middle, which is the sigma, but then you've got the pi bond, which is around that bond. And that causes, again, double bonds to be shorter because that extra bonding will pull the atoms in even tighter, and it also makes it stronger and shorter. A triple bond forms a pi in, on the top and bottom, but also one on the sides, left and right. The sigma goes through the middle. So when you form a triple bond, there is now a pi bond across the top and one across the side. So literally, you take that central bond, that sigma bond, and you encase it in pi bonds. And that makes a triple bond even shorter. It's the shortest bond and it's the strongest bond because of the additional bonding that results in those unhybridized orbitals. So each pi bond, this would be a p orbital that's not hybridized and so would this be. There'd be two p orbitals that are not hybridized and therefore they bond with each other and that's where the triple bond comes into play. So that's what sigma pi bonds look like in real life and that might give you a better understanding of what they are.